Good morning. Today is the 8th of October in this 2020 year of our Lord. Weather forecast. Today it's a beautiful blue sky, no breeze, cool temperatures, probably uh, getting close to the 70s uh, today, maybe a little higher. Uh, beautiful day to enjoy the gifts of fall and uh, the gifts of life. Uh, today, this topic will be on faith, waiting patiently on God, uh, God's presence in our midst. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from a portion of the 37th Psalm. Do not fret yourselves because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass. And like the green grass, fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealings as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself or lead, it, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, and they will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked, because he sees that their days will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and the needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. The little that the righteous has is better than great riches of the wicked. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord upholds the righteous. I'd like to begin with a, a prayer that's offered by William Barclay in the Prayers for the Christian. And let us pray. Grant, O oh God, <clears throat> that we may never lose the way through our self-will and so end up in the far countries of the soul, that we may never abandon the struggle, but that we may endure to the end and so be brave and be saved, that we may never drop out of the race, but that we may ever press forward to the goal of our high calling that we may never choose the cheap and passing things and let go of the precious things that last forever, that we may never take the easy way and so leave the right way, that we may never forget that sweat is the price of all things and that without the cross there cannot be the crown. So keep us and strengthen us by your grace that no disobedience, and no weakness and no failure may stop us from entering into the blessedness which awaits those who are faithful in all the changes and the chances of life, down even to the gates of death, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And these words as a reflection, and they come from uh, Anthony Bloom in Living Prayer. God withholds an answer to our prayers, not only when they are unworthy, but when he finds in us such greatness, such depth, depth and power of faith, that he can rely upon us to remain faithful even in the face of his silence. I remember a young woman with an incurable disease, and after years of the awareness of God's presence, she sh suddenly sensed God's absence, some sort of real absence, and she wrote to me saying, 
pray to God, please, that I should never yield to the temptation of building up an illusion of his presence rather than accepting his absence. Her faith was great. She was able to stand this temptation, and God gave her this experience of his silent presence and absence. Remember these examples. Think them over, because one day you will surely have to face the same situation. I cannot give you any exercise, but I only want you to remember that we should always keep our faith intact, both in the love of God and in our honest, truthful faith. And when this temptation comes upon us, let us say this prayer which is made of two sentences pronounced by Jesus himself. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Thy will, not mine, be done. And lastly, the words of the hymn, Jesus, I my cross have taken, all to leave and follow thee, destitute, despised, forsaken, Thou from hence my all shalt be. Perish every fond ambition, all I've sought or hoped or known. Yet how rich is my condition, God and heaven are still my own. Let the world despise and leave me, they have left my Savior too. Human hearts and looks deceive me, thou art not like those untrue. And while thou shalt smile upon me, God of wisdom, love, and might, foes may hate and friends may shun me, show thy face, and all is bright. Haste thee on from grace to glory, armed by faith and winged by prayer. Heaven's eternal day before thee, God's own hand shall guide thee there. Soon shall close thy earthly mansion, swift shall pass thy pilgrim days. Hope shall change to glad fruition, hope to sight and prayer to praise. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, the sounds of your world surround us babbling of waters, the chirping of birds, the sound of a mechanical world in the distance, and the sound of silence, sometimes the silence and the absence of your presence in our midst. Help us as a people of faith to know the certainty and the surety that you are at hand, that our words are heard, and your will is done, your will, not ours. And that's a difficult thing, O oh Lord, we wrestle with. We often wait more than patiently to receive signs, signs of your wonder, signs of your grace, signs of your presence in the midst of troubles, in the midst of joys. Give to us your constance, and your certainty that we know in the long run at the end you shall embrace us to your side forevermore and while we journey we journey upon this way of life give us confident hope and help in the love and the care that we can offer one for another help us to be instruments of transformation of the brokenness of the world Give us courage to stand for those things that are right and good in the face of things that do not seem so. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that know a constant difficulty in their midst. Might they not be discouraged? And if they have not turned to you, might they do so to have confidence in your presence with them? to see what hope eternal might bring to them one day. Bring us your salvation, the gift of your Son Christ, to light our way each day. And render a good healing to those who suffer difficulties this day. 
for those that may have lost loved ones, for those that struggle with illness, that have lost jobs and family, that have lost even hope. Give courage and strength to all. And hear now our prayers that we lift up before you in the moments of silence that we share. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.